Okay, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to Chaos Mesh Overview Practices and fe Features. <clears throat> so my name is Sam Bharat and I'm working as a field CTO at SIBO and I am a CNCF ambassador. I'm CK and CKS Scenarios book author. I'm also a founder of Cape Simplify that aims to simplify cloud native. So even after the session, feel free to reach me out at different places. Unfortunately, my co-presenter was not able to make it to KubeCon, but we have a live recorded demo uh, from my co-presenter. Today, we'll be discussing about, obviously, chaos engineering, um, chaos mesh, uh, some of the demos, project updates, and where the project is heading towards. So, we'll be sharing some of the insights of the um, roadmap as well, uh, what we are looking towards adding or improving in the Chaos Mesh ecosystem. So, starting off, introducing Chaos Engineering. Before we delve into the discussion um, of the Chaos Engineering, we need to understand the current context. And in the current context, the systems are complex. With the rise of uh, adopting microservices, all these architectures, the complexity of the applications is steadily increasing and even the best and the best in class engineers are keeping it uh, you know hard to battle the complexity and in these uh, scenarios conducting testing is extremely difficult especially to cover all the corner cases that you can imagine and this is where chaos engineering comes into play and in this you actually inject or simulate various failures, failure scenarios, which are very much the real world scenarios. And chaos engineering can help us better understand and improve the systems. Uh, the entry point, again, is to simulate an extreme scenario that could occur in real world. That's, that's the main goal. Uh, but it should be done in a controlled environment because we are trying to replicate something that happens in the real world in the production system. So we cannot randomly do and break things and thereby uh, verifying and improving on the systems. So failures and incidents can happen anytime. If you see the timeline, you'll be able to see the um, almost 44 outages in the past three months within github itself like even regardless of the size of the organization the number of engineers working in that organization the best practices follows in the followed uh, by an organization things can fail and they do things do break human error um, all these things and or poor decision making anything can lead to um, all these things so what is chaos engineering and what it is not chaos engineering is about breaking things in the controlled environment and through well-planned experiments in order to build confidence in your application to withstand turbulent conditions so you can see the the five steps over there uh, the first one the steady state so first is defining the steady state so what do you mean by that is uh, it's actually the measurable output of a system that indicates a normal behavior and uh, we can we can get that behavior by observing the systems um, carefully and get the steady state now we define the hypothesis so second second portion the second part comes in the hypothesis that the steady state will be in the control will be same will continue to remain the same in both the control group and the experiment groups now we introduce the experiments and these are the real world chaos experiments that are there so introducing all these variables like hardware failures network failures network slowdown um, all these kind of uh, failures can be injected and then trying to validate and disprove the hypothesis to find the difference between the steady state and the uh, between the control group and the uh, experiment group uh, and then keep on analyzing, improving based on the results uh, that is getting cleared. The last point is important. Chaos engineering is not about breaking things randomly, which I, I just mentioned before as well, without a purpose, because since this is being done in production. 
um, also the the development or when we, when we go back the memory lane it's it's not very new concept or terminology this has been there for about decade more than a decade now so the development of chaos engineering can be divided into like you can see different stages in a timeline uh, starting from the early days of netflix uh, doing their business killing down the uh, virtual machines uh, to understand the resiliency of the systems back when the cloud provider like aws were not uh, that much resilient uh, so the, and this really worked well for them and slowly and slowly they started writing more and more engineering blogs on how they are uh, implementing these kind of failure scenarios um, getting the cultural change like we have the cultural shift we had the cultural shift of devops so cultural shift of uh, this learning and implementation in the architectures as well and as you can see on the timeline different organizations different companies coming in and in 2017 you can see more and more of open source projects uh, like chaos toolkit chaos cube um, litmus chaos mesh chaos blade all those coming in and then even the cloud providers uh, providing their own saas kind of offerings um, and then uh, gremlin and all these uh, so this is not something that happened suddenly obviously it has it's kind of a combined effort over the years and knowledge that has been transitioned from over different set of systems production systems um, to with respect to the adoption of the cloud native technology because as the technology has evolved there there have been lot more complexity that has increased and so has the has, so has the chaos engineering experiment way of doing things and what do i mean by that so when we talk about the uh, adoption of cloud native technology chaos engineering is more and more integrated into into the uh, engineering environments with respect to the declarative api now you can declare the steady state you can define this is this is what uh, the steady state looks like expected state looks like and the controller then you know uh, verifies that and tries to read that particular desired state clearly and then fit it into the chaos like creating the chaos out there in the in the systems and which you can easily control and observe uh, the popularity of linux containers obviously allows the application to run in the isolated environments that's what the containers have been uh, so when you can run them in the isolated environments it makes it even easier to minimize the blast radius uh, when we talk about doing things in production and also the uh, standardization of the kubernetes container runtime makes it makes the fault injection more easy smooth and uh, universal um, and then you can also use something called a privileged container to perform node level chaos when you talk about the kubernetes ecosystem uh, also <clears throat> coming to chaos mesh so chaos mesh is uh, an open source tool and it is a chaos engineering platform that provides comprehensive and user friendly tool chain to do chaos experiments on kubernetes um, and even beyond actually I'll, i'll touch on that as well so to understand the key features like what chaos mesh gives is it offers the several kind of chaos experiments um that you can see but it's not limited to those uh, pod chaos network chaos io chaos dns time jvm all these type of chaos and also you can extend these capabilities via chaos d uh, to do the node level experiments like stress disk failures uh, network failures and things like that uh, chaos mesh also offers a dedicated um, predictable chaos experiments and scheduled schedule workflow features so you can create your own set of workflows with different set of chaos experiments in that and create a whole workflow in it and additionally yes it has a, a web ui to manage and inspect all the uh, chaos experiments so the design goals have always been you know to make it easy to use um, regardless you are a beginner or an expert you should be able to understand because every chaos experiment has a separate Uh, kind of custom resource definition so you should be able to simply understand if this is this type of chaos then these are the set of parameters that you need to set um uh, coming to the chaos mesh architectures there are majorly three main components 
One is the uh, chaos dashboard uh, that is again simple web UI to manage and inspect chaos experiments. It like allows you to run, manage, create uh, the uh, even monitor the chaos experiments. Uh, the next one is the brain of brain, heart, whatever you want to call it of uh, the chaos mesh architecture, which is the chaos controller manager. Uh, so that is actually responsible for managing and scheduling the uh, chaos experiment. So basically when you when you define what you want inside a chaos experiment, the then the request goes to uh, the chaos controller manager and uh, it detects handles that state based on what you have defined and it it's it also embedded it also is embedded within within the workflow engine uh, where you can define and execute the complex um, chaos scenarios. So users can use it to orchestrate multiple chaos experiments, creating more, uh, you know, complex use cases and complex scenarios, uh, close to real life production scenarios and health checking and all that stuff is there. And the next one is the chaos demon, which actually injects and runs the chaos experiments. And you can, you can actually do it via UI, via the API and the CLI. So you should be able to do uh, or customize templates. So you should be able to do it in different ways as well. So it's not only the UI that sh you should, uh, you can create the chaos experiment. So this is the chaos controller manager, uh, one of the key components and uh, it monitors the creation changes and deletion of the resources. Uh, when Whenever there is a change uh, or uh, there is a new experiment which is created, the controller manager determines where to inject, uh, when to revert from a failover, recover from the faults and this decision is based on the configuration provided. Once the decision has, has been made, it goes to the uh, chaos daemon. Chaos daemon operates in a Linux environment and it is responsible for actually injecting the uh, chaos uh, fault and it uses the common Linux namespaces and C groups concepts to inject the false fault inside the Linux containers. And then you have uh, different type of chaos experiments will be having uh, different dedicated executors uh, for them. For example, the if you can see the Kubernetes pod, Kubernetes API is used to implement the pod chaos, pod kill and different container runtime kind of scenarios and uh, Linux kernel network and command line tools like IP tables uh, is used to implement the network chaos. Uh, we have a built, built in user mode. Uh, like uh, for for the IO chaos and then the layer 3 transport protocol for the HTTP chaos. Uh, also the built in uh, kernel module um, that you can see uh, the block IO scheduler chaos driver um, for the block chaos and then the uh, with the existing tools uh, integrated byte man to implement the JVM chaos. So instead of using the, the scripts and, and series of scripts on how to define, uh, the design philosophy has been pretty straightforward with chaos mesh and you know you, you, you define everyone has a different executor um, and, and it, it runs. Um, and for different types you have to write a different type of CRD, we'll, we'll get to know like we'll do a sample kind of CRD how it, how it actually looks like. So for different type of chaos experiments using a deterministic executors along with the custom resource definition is another aspect of the chaos mesh design architecture. So you will be having a standard um, YAML file which everyone is used to writing in the cloud native ecosystem where you talk about Kubernetes containers, you, you have a cluster, uh, you write a YAML file for whatever object you want to create and when you install chaos mesh it install the custom resource definitions. So not only you can use the standard, uh, so it, it lets you use the different set of chaos experiments. Like uh, you can use network chaos. So the kind will be network chaos. So those things can be done. Um, and at the same time, um, we also have the workflows uh, and the schedule objects that can allow to allow users to combine all these things, all the complex experiment scenarios. And you can also do the health check for more detailing and understanding of the health of the application, um, allowing the workflow to respond to the changes in the application status, such as uh, terminating the workflow or uh, when the application is unavailable. 
So this particular example um, is of a network chaos. I don't know how how much visible that is, but yeah, you you need to trust me. This this is network chaos. So this is a network chaos example, um, and we have several. So think it is as a there's a, a Redis and there's a backend. So there is a backend application, Redis instances. These two things are there, and what we want to do is randomly select a backend application, randomly select a Redis application, and inject a delay from the backend application to Redis application periodically for a certain duration of time. So we want to add a delay for a particular seconds and do it on a regular basis from the backend application to the Redis application to simulate this uh, real world network chaos. Like if something like this happens, then, then what happens? Uh, so that is done and uh, selected randomly and uh, let's see how it is done. So the, the boxes that you can see are the selectors. So we use selectors to mark our source and target where the usage of selector is uh, consistent with that of Kubernetes itself. Um, an additional point to note over here is the mode is one. So it will only select one pod like there can be multiple replicas when you specify stuff within Kubernetes. So it will only select one uh, out of that. And that's where uh, you do it in a controlled manner. So you don't just kill everything or you just you just don't delay traffic uh, from all the pods to all the pods. You select one particular pod from uh, from it. And then you declare the experiment action as delay. So you can see uh, the delay over there and configure the chaos experiment delay of 10 seconds on the outgoing uh, the, the network traffic. And then is the scheduling object. So you define the uh, duration that this experiment, this particular experiment will uh, run for 30 seconds every 60 seconds. So as a result, something like this should appear if you see on the graph for 30 seconds every 60 seconds that's that's how it will run and from the back end uh, pod to the redis pod uh, things things are going so that's how kind of uh, easy it is and it actually should give you in your head that yes this can happen in production and when this happens what happens you you can see and then you try to figure out whether your systems application everything is running fine if not then you need to fine tune or you need to see what you need to do more more replicas or um, certain other aspects that you can um, use uh, to fix if there is any issue comes in the production um, just to add a bit more about chaos D, which I talked briefly. Uh, so in, in our community, there were many requirements for conducting the chaos experiments, not only on Kubernetes clusters, but on the bare metal servers and the virtual machines. Uh, so chaos D is actually, it can be actually used independently. So it's a collection again of fault injection tools um, that we have reused the injection logic of the same chaos daemon that actually injects uh, at the end executes the um, chaos. It can be used as a CLI as well as as uh, agent node as a service. Uh, when used as a service, it can be integrated with chaos mesh using um, the kind physical machine chaos. So the kind uh, that was network chaos, the kind will be physical machine chaos. And then you should be able to um, either create a workflow together for the physical machine chaos, network chaos, create one after the other, or do the chaining. So, but in summary, uh, outside of Kubernetes, Chaos D is also a powerful chaos injection tool. So, Chaos D, yeah, Chaos D. Uh, now, coming to the demo, hope it plays as expected. Hello, everyone. I'm here to show you some. Uh, awesome demos and some practices about Chaos Mesh. Um, my name is Zhi Qiang and I am the maintainer of Chaos Mesh and I'm also a uh, I'm also an individual freelancer. So uh, about the demo, we are going to use this uh, application called Potato Head. Uh, it's a really funny uh, application and it's the demo app for the things that take app delivery and uh, it uses uh, it, it use the microservice architecture. Uh, about the microservice, 
um, the application is split into several components which um, uh, which response a part of the, 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 the potato man's body like uh, the head, the, the arms and the legs. So um, it, it's very interesting for uh, an application user composition a uh, potato man to respond to a microservice architecture. Um, today we are going to show uh, we're going to show you three typical three typical cases about chaos mesh. Uh, the cloud chaos, the network chaos, and the HTTP chaos. Uh, so I'm already installed the chaos mesh and um, potato uh, application inside of my uh, Minikube cluster. So the first, uh, I'm going to show you the pod chaos. So pod in, in this case, is, uh, in this case, I will kill one of the pod such as left arm, and the rest of the microservice should also works. But you could see on the preview, uh, this part will not work. So I started. This is a normal situation of the application, and then I will in inject this. Uh, this this pod chaos into the application, so I will execute by kube control apply dash l pod chaos. Oh, sorry, apply dash l. So this this, this chaos is created is created, and let's refresh the pages, and we could find that this page is already gone. And if we want to recover this uh, chaos, we just remove this object. Yeah, just use K instead of kube control. So, do it. so and let's take a look about the status of the chaos. Uh, the status of the path is will be left arm, and the status is be running and it's already restarted. And let's re refresh the application. Yeah, it's back. So, uh, the application goes well. So, uh, actually, this uh, this is, this situation uh, reflects a uh, design uh, a better design called single point of failure. Actually, it could be um, passed through by multiple replicas. So maybe I could show you another uh, cases. Uh, let's uh, scale the left arm to three replicas. Yeah, and let's take a look. The path is creating. Yeah, this way. So if we execute these chaos experiments again, please note this: we are using mode 1. It means we, we will only make one of the pod to uh, failure. So uh, if uh, one pod failure, the rest two replicas still works, and it should be uh, well for a high available a high available application. So let's start it. Yeah, let's, let's create this chaos experiments again. And yeah, it's still well. Why? Because there are still other instances running very pretty well pretty well so okay that's the part the part of chaos and another chaos is the network chaos i will uh, i will inject network networks delay to uh, different components and change the sequence they uh, uh they, they, they appear to the web front page so this is a normal situation but when I refresh the web pages, it disappears so quickly. And after I apply the network curse delay, yeah. Before that, I, I, I said I should take a look about the content. I will I will create different delay into the onto the different components. Two hundred, four hundred, eight hundred. So I will create create eight, and then I refresh it. Yeah, you can say the different parts of the body. Uh, appears one by one. Yeah, this kind of, uh, th th this is called because of the network's uh, delay. Let's delete it. Uh, then let's recover it. I just delete it. Yeah, it's, it's, go, it's go back to more. more. And, uh, and at last, I want to show you the <laughs> most interesting thing uh, here is it's, it's HTTP chaos. Um, actually, uh, HTTP chaos could modify the content of the request or the response. And in this case, I will use another picture to replace the original, the, the head picture. I will use chaos mesh logo to replace it. And also, we could take it the back of the file. So, yeah, this, this is a lot of things because the, actually this is the content of the SVG file. Let's do not care about that. Yeah, kind of HTTP chaos. 
replace replace the body with this kind of content as we created. Yeah, then we take a re refresh. So <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It, it, the chaos the HTTP chaos injected and it, it replaced the uh, picture with the chaos mesh logo and then we recover it by just delete the object yeah, yeah it has recovered very quickly very efficiently so yeah that's how they, 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 I think you already get the awesome thing which could, uh, which chaos mesh could do and I think I will, sh I will share some practice uh, from our adopters uh, to talk about the uh, integration, um, in in the, the integration with Chaos Mesh and their own platform. So uh, the first share is called uh, uh, Stability Test in TiDB releases. Uh, TiDB is the product uh, of PinCap and it's a um, high availability and a distributed database system. And uh, they're using Chaos Mesh in their CI system, in their CI pipeline, and in which in, in each releases version, released version, they will uh, use lots of situations or there's lots of situations of chaos tests to verify that TiDB is still fit for the uh, high availability uh, requirement. Yeah, this, this, this is one of the usage. Another usage is chaos mesh on TiDB cloud. Uh, PinCap also sells a uh, global area available TiDB service uh, called um, TiDB Cloud and, and the business across um, lots of the uh, uh, region, region and available zone. And the design is uh, there, there, there is a uh, regional chaos mesh and it could inject uh, different chaos into the, uh, into the, into the tenant uh, instance under the um, same, same region. Yeah, it's kind of very efficient. Uh, design is to uh, is avoid the um, or heading to install too much uh, chaos mesh instance of every tennis cluster, and they also have their products called Clinic, uh, which also integrated the chaos mesh inside of their product, and you could say um, the TiDB user could just uh, use the drill test um, functionality to uh, simulate some chaos experiments in their cluster, and also with some beautiful. Uh, metrics, metrics chart inside of the page, and another uh, uh, another adapter is Tencent Cloud. Uh, they, have, they also have their own platform called Oscar, and it's the Tencent's private cloud chaos engineer platform. It's really um, a complex a, a complex system, and they have uh, lots of <coughs> customers um, for uh, such as internal cluster uh, internal customers like. Uh, to kind of possible platforms and the WeChat Pay, and they also have other external customers like um, a bank company, insurance company, and finance companies. And inside of their design, Chaos Mesh, um, they, they use case of Chaos Mesh as a powerful tool to uh, inject chaos. And they have other, um, uh, they have other, they have other components to uh, management and orchestrate the chaos experiment. Uh, for example, uh, there are lots of chaos experiments could be reused, and they have built their um, management system called uh, Oscar Hub. Oscar Hub have lots of templates of chaos experiments which could be reused by different user, and they could also um, uh, use their uh, uh, CMDB. It's, it's really like the uh, label li label things in Kubernetes system. They could then da da dynamically to choose. Uh, the uh, chaos experiments target to get injected, and they had and, and uh, Oscar also have their um, a management system. They have uh, they build they build the um, great uh, dashboard for management and the report. Uh, you know, chaos mesh does not provide this kind of functionality about um, experiments reporting or chaos experiment history. So uh, they just do it by themselves. So yeah, there's some practices about how to use uh, how to integrate Chaos Mesh with their own platform. So um, I'm I'm very happy to share uh, the demo and the practices. And thank you very much to join us. And back to Sam. Thanks. Awesome demo. Um, coming to the project updates and uh, the roadmap. So. Um, some of the updates with the ongoing project. Uh, so firstly, it's we have a new release, uh, Chaos Mesh 2.6.2. Uh, 
Um, the latest version comes with some of the enhanced features uh, and bug fixes providing more robust solution for chaos engineering experiments and uh, chaos mesh al always follows the upstream so it's it supports the latest kubernetes version 1.28 um, also re defined the dashboard view so the updates aim to provide more user friendly interface and better overall user experience um, in the in the commitment with respect to security and safety um, we have upgraded the dependencies to address the vulnerable issues uh, this ensures the platform continues to be secure and reliable and uh, lastly the introduction of uh, s-bombs software builds of material and the signed container images uh, obviously these feature again enhance the transparency and uh, uh, trustworthiness of the uh, of the software products that you are using s-bombs is mandatory yes that's not new thing now uh, looking at the future of chaos mesh some one of the most requested one as well uh, so consist consistently the team is working on providing more and more um, observability um, in chaos mesh so we plan to provide the metrics for chaos mesh for helping better understand the effects of that chaos experiment uh, mainly the graph that you shown so those sort of more, more um, graphs that you can you can see when the chaos experiment happened what happened in that particular duration the network loss happened uh, so uh, for example in that network latency uh, the injected pod for network chaos fine grained cpu memory usage metrics uh, for the stress chaos and, and all those things and then we also plan to increase the uh, ability of health check with the goal of achieving the similar liveness probe um, on a pod uh, then multi cluster uh, support chaos allowing users to conduct experiment across multiple clusters um, using a centralized management and scheduling so centralized management scheduling and you should be able to uh, run different chaos experiments across different clusters and then uh, code base is continuously being optimized um, and with respect to latest kubernetes support end-to-end uh, -end testing integration testing all that stuff and um, a very interesting thing that is happening or which which the the kind of aim is um, is striving to collaborate with other open source projects to build a chaos automation platform kind of so um, c c chap like chap which is the chaos uh, automation platform that like we call it like that originates from the internal practices at netflix and uh, can automatically carry out small scale chaos experiments and provide automated analysis and reports uh, so this allows the um, idea of sacrificing the experiments of a very small portion of users exchange for the stability of the entire platform um, obviously there are many technical uh, points involved in automatic chaos experiments uh, and the development of uh, this particular platform uh, needs a lot of effort meeting and all those things so uh, for example we we can use captain for canary releases um, and roll back after the experiment is completed we can use uh, service mesh or gateway api to schedule traffic uh, redirect a very small portion of traffic uh, of chaos experiment group and the world we can use k6 grafana k6 um, as an additional load testing tool for simulating additional loads um, and we can finally use observability facilities um, to collect analyze performance logs generate reports create fancy graphs and and all those things so yes the, there are a lot of future possibilities that will be there with respect to uh, chaos mesh so but this is the direction that the project is going but they are also looking for more and more contributors so that these things can happen fast so as we move towards uh, exploring all the challenging things and more and more opportunities for building the uh, chap like solutions the chaos automation platform and integrating the different set of tooling captain i mean these are just the examples but there are there are other set of toolings as well um, and that should be needing more and more contributors 
So that's pretty much it that I had for this particular session uh, with my co-presenter who was not there, but uh, you saw the awesome potato head application. Um, I mean, that was, that was really funny, right? Um, so thank you so much for coming in and uh, I'll be here around hanging if you have any Q&A. I think the time is already done. So thank you so much for coming.